Hello friends, it's Juliana Michaels with you and in today's video I'm going to share with you how to monoprint with stencils and then walk you through the rest of the details on how I created this card. Monoprinting is something I've been wanting to try for a while now but just never took the time. It's an easy technique to do and it's also one more way to use stencils and you gotta love stretching your stash. I absolutely love the effect and now I'm looking at my stencils in a whole new light. The supplies you'll need to do a mono print include a stencil, of course, spray inks, a spray bottle filled with water, watercolor paper, and paper towels. I'm working in a Tim Holtz black box, which I found to be really helpful in keeping the mess of working with spray inks under control. You could also work inside a cardboard box. I begin by placing the stencil in my splat box on top of some paper towels to help absorb the excess ink. Next, I spray the stencil with spray ink. Here I'm using Distress Mica Stain and Balsam Fur, which I've already shaken to mix it. Feel free to use any spray ink you have. I'm then spritzing the stencil with some water using a distress sprayer. I have a paper towel laying outside the splat box with my Distress watercolor paper on it. I place the stencil ink side down onto the watercolor paper and then use another paper towel to dab off any excess ink that seeps under the stencil. I also like to gently push around on the solid parts of the stencil to help move the ink around and get better coverage. If you decide to work with a stencil that has text or numbers, remember that you will need to flip it over before you add the ink so the letters and numbers aren't backwards. To reveal the mono print, gently remove the stencil and allow the ink to dry. You can also use a heat gun to speed up the drying process. And with that, the monoprint is technically complete and is gorgeous with its shimmery finish. I wanted to add a little more color to my monoprint, so here I'm placing the clean stencil back over my monoprint. I'm working on the scrapbook.com double-sided silicone craft mat, which grips to my work surface and to the paper, so they can't slide around. To help hold the stencil in place, I'm also using some mint tape. Using these small blending brushes, I'm going to color in the various floral sprigs with Distress Ink. The colors I'm using are Kitsch Flamingo, Picked Raspberry, Peeled Paint, Forest Moss, and Iced Spruce. These brushes are about a quarter inch in size and are helpful for applying different colors of ink to the small sections of the stencil. I'm only using three brushes, one for the pinks, one for the greens and one for the blue, and cleaning them off in between colors onto a paper towel. This does take a bit of time, so I've sped up the filming here, but the end result is worth it in my opinion. I recommend using the coloring time as a way to relax and de-stress. Once the coloring's completed, it's time to start adding the rest of the details. I took the scrapbook.com nested tag dies and die cut a larger one from the textured side of Distress watercolor paper, a smaller one from the smooth side of the watercolor paper, and another one from a piece of vellum. Next, I'm adding some vintage photo ink to the edge of my background papers and the tags using a foam domed ink blending tool. I also ink blended peeled paint distress ink onto the smaller watercolor tag to give some contrast and color to the layers. 
To add some more interest to the tags, I'm going to do some stamping and heat embossing. Here I'm placing the watercolor paper tag into my stamping platform and using the scrapbook.com dotted adhesive roller, which is repositionable and perfect for holding the tag in place, while I stamp the script image from the Tim Holtz Entomology stamp set. Before I stamped the image, I made sure the ink was dry. I then rubbed over the paper using an anti-static powder tool. The idea with an anti-static tool is to help prevent the embossing powder from sticking to the paper where you don't want it to stick. In this form, the powder can be a little messy, so I store mine in an old Altoid tin. Here I'm applying Versamark ink to the stamp. This is an embossing ink that dries slowly and is great for heat embossing. After I stamped the image, I placed a folded piece of typing paper under the tag and poured liquid platinum embossing powder over the design. I tapped off the excess and poured it back into the jar. Now I'm heat embossing the stamped image using a heat gun. I always love to watch the transformation as the powder melts and becomes shiny. Here I'm adding the vellum tag and I'm tearing a bit of it away to reveal the embossed design. To continue with the layers, next up is some watercoloring. I've stamped the floral image from the scrapbook.com wildflower branches stamp set using black soot archival ink onto a piece of watercolor paper. I had to stamp it several times, so I think my ink pad might need re-inking. I then die cut it using the coordinating dies. Now for the coloring. I'm using Distress watercolor pencils and a water brush. Here I'm lifting the ink from the pencil with the water brush and then coloring in the image. I find this to be a really easy way to color in small detailed images such as this. To finish off the card, I added machine stitching around the edges of the monoprint background and the tags. I added eyelets to the tags and then a bit of jute. The final touch was a heat embossed sentiment, which is from the scrapbook.com Celebrate Expression stamp set. Here's a look at a similar card I created using the same techniques I shared in this video. The only differences are that I heat embossed on the outer vellum tag and I used a different image from the Wildflower Branches stamp set. Thanks so much for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed learning how to monoprint with stencils and the rest of the details on how this card came together.